Hello, welcome back to my channel. I'm currently recovering from a cold and there's been a flu going around the office over the last few weeks and I thought I'd escaped it but sadly on Wednesday I came down with a sore throat and a sniffly nose so apologies if I sound a bit snotty but unlike my co-workers you have the advantage of not physically being near me so luckily you're not going to catch this cold. So today I'm going to talk about the books that I read in June. First up I read Help by Simon Amstel. This is one of the books from my recent haul so I already explained a little bit about why I wanted to read it but basically Simon Amstel is a British comedian and this is kind of a collection of excerpts from his stand-up shows combined with extra writing talking about the things that he generally talks about in his stand-up shows so talking about his experiences being gay and navigating relationships and family and a variety of other things as well. I was expecting to really enjoy this. The previous sort of memoir style comedy books that I've read from from some of my favourite comedians I've really enjoyed. Um, for example, this one by Joe Lycett, which is actually a book I borrowed from a friend and I've just never returned it, which is really bad. But I really enjoyed this. I felt that Joe Lycett was able to take content from his stand-up and rework it to work as a book format because obviously there's going to be a huge difference between someone performing their ideas as opposed to writing them down. So I felt that translation was successful in this book but I didn't find it successful in this one unfortunately. This might be partly to do with the format so, so here's a page where you can tell the difference. This is a direct excerpt from one of his stand-ups and this is the extra written stuff. Um, so he's put it in different fonts depending on which stand-up show it comes from and sort of interweaving the excerpts with the other text but I found that quite jolting to read. I would have preferred it if he just took the ideas from the stand-up and written them out properly. I felt like they just didn't work written down and there were bits that I recognised from some of the stand-up I've seen on YouTube and although I'd found them like really interesting and really funny in those clips that I'd watched I didn't get that same reaction from them written down even though it was the exact same thing that he was saying so that kind of detracted from what Simon that's what I was trying to say for me. The second book I finished in June was The Harp in the South by Ruth Park. This is one of those super famous Australian classics that I've always seemed to have known the title of but didn't really know what it was about until I started reading it. So it's about a family living in the slums in Surrey Hills in Sydney. I think it's set in around the 1940s. The book is published in 1948 and I'm kind of assuming that the story is at least set in sort of the 30s to 40s era. Though there is no mention of World War II so I don't know whether that's just purposely left out by the author or whether it is in fact set either before or after that war. So yeah, it's about a family, sort of second generation Irish. There's a mum and a dad and two daughters and reading it, it kind of gave me like soap opera vibes but not in a bad way, like in a way that there is no overarching plot as such. There are plot points that last the whole book but it's kind of each chapter is its own little story about the family and about different characters within the family and the people that live around them as well, which I really enjoyed. I kind of enjoy those episodic types of storytelling that are more just examinations of people and places rather than having a central plot line. This book has never been out of print since it was first published but it was kind of reviewed badly when it first came out by certain reviewers because a lot of sort of like officials in Sydney didn't want anyone to know that there were slums in Sydney and outrightly said that this book was a complete fiction because they were like no there are no slums in Sydney even though there have definitely been several slums that existed in Sydney and ironically Surrey Hills is now an incredibly expensive place to live. So I felt like this book really gave a great picture of multicultural Australia. It's definitely not without its faults the way it describes certain races is definitely stereotypical but the author is never being hateful towards any one race. Apart from, I think it's like maybe Dutch people, she's kind of rude towards them. I don't know what the Dutch did to her, but there are definitely some nasty European characters that turn up in this. Aside from that though, there is a, a Chinese man who owns a grocery store nearby. There is a Jewish character that the daughter dates. She also ends up dating a boy that has Aboriginal heritage and that is just completely accepted by the family. They of course consider it in terms of the way that society is going to look at their daughter but the daughter herself completely doesn't care. She just couldn't care less what society thinks and couldn't care less what race anyone is either. Definitely be wary of stereotypes and also um, words that we definitely wouldn't use now being used in the book 
but the author herself is 100% being positive about multicultural Australia. Yeah, it's a really interesting perspective to get from a book written so long ago, so I really enjoyed it. Interestingly, the author herself is actually born in New Zealand and only moved to Australia as an adult, so I wonder if it was having that outside perspective that gave her a much better insight into the reality of Australia. Next, I read The Children of the New World by Alexander Weinstein. This is another one from my book depository book haul. Unfortunately, I didn't enjoy this one, which is really putting me off buying a new book ever again. This is a collection of short stories and they are all about different technologies and predicted futures. And I heard it compared to Black Mirror, which was why I was really interested in reading it, but I found this almost like the opposite of Black Mirror in a way. Firstly, every story is incredibly bleak. It really creates a negative view of the future. And I felt like the technologies examined in this, it was sort of inevitable that things would go wrong. Whereas I feel like in Black Mirror, the technologies definitely do go wrong a lot of the time, but you can see the logic in why they were created in how people thought that they would make things better, if that makes sense. I was also quite surprised at how every single protagonist in this book was the same male character. They were all obsessed with sex, they were all kind of weak-willed, kind of arrogant, and all the female characters were incredibly manic pixie dream girl. They really only existed to show the male protagonist why he was wrong and to provide him with a reason to become a better person. There were definitely some stories and ideas that I did enjoy, but I felt like most of the stories, the ideas I'd either seen before in other TV shows or other books, or they were just a little bit obvious. Anyway, I would not recommend this group of short stories. You'd definitely be better off just watching Black Mirror. The last book, well not really the last book but I read in June, it was a book that I read throughout the whole of June pretty much, and that was The Idiot by Elif Batterman. So this book is quite large, so I decided that I wouldn't take it around with me on the bus as it'd be a bit heavy to carry, and so I kept it by my bedside and read a little bit every night. And I kind of wanted to test out the reading method of reading several books at once because I've always been someone to just read one book at a time for the most part and I sort of thought maybe I could get a routine going where I, if I have a larger book that I'm reading I can read that when I'm at home and then have a thinner book that I can take out and read when I'm out and about. And with The Idiot this definitely works. So The Idiot is set in the 90s and it is about an 18 year old girl called Salen and she is going to college at Harvard University. I would describe this book as kind of one long monologue, though in a way any book written from the first person is kind of just a very long monologue, but this is partly because it doesn't have any chapters. There are a couple of breaks in the book where time does skip ahead a little bit. The book follows Salen for about a year and for the most part continuously looks at her day to day life, which could be very boring for some people. I luckily found it super interesting. I think because I really related to Salin and she really did remind me of me at that age going to university in some ways. It's really hard to say what the book is about because I feel like people could interpret it in many different ways. I know a major interpretation is that it's mainly about language and communication, which it definitely is because Salin is studying language and she is constantly thinking about the way language works. She has a Turkish background and so you get little insights into the way the Turkish language works and how it differs from English and she's also studying Russian. She has a Russian friend called Svetlana who's probably my favourite character after Zaylin and she also becomes quite obsessed with a Hungarian boy called Ivan. So there's heaps of different languages all being discussed all the time. I think the main reason I really enjoyed being in Salen's head was kind of her very droll way of looking at the world and also the way she reacted to things. She kind of didn't react to anything and there is one point where Sletvana sort of says to Salen that she's impressed at how Salen is kind of up for anything and it's not that Salen is particularly extroverted or outgoing, it's more that she doesn't have a strong opinion on anything so she has no strong reason not to do things and as she wants to be a writer she kind of feels obligated to experience as much as she can. And I definitely felt that that was me at university as well. I really not try to put myself out of my comfort zone but I wouldn't say no if someone invited me to something because I thought well I should take these opportunities to experience stuff but I do remember when I was in situations that 
weren't necessarily my comfort zone. I was very much taking everything in and not being able to process it very well until later because I'd get an information overload if that makes sense. And that's what I feel like this whole book is. It's Sailor narrating everything as it happens without making a judgment because it's all kind of a bit overwhelming and she doesn't really know what to think. It's really interesting the fact that it was set in the 90s. It's I think it was set in that era because the author went to university in the 90s and it just took a while to write the book so by the time that it actually got published it became a historical novel as she says in her acknowledgements. I feel like the book would definitely be quite different if it was written now because all of the characters are really into reading physical books to find out things that nowadays we would just google or read the wikipedia page on. It really gives the book such a nostalgic feel. Her and Ivan also start off their friendship by emailing each other which again is super nostalgic now and is such a different way of communicating than Facebook messaging for example because an email really is just a digital version of a letter whereas Facebook messaging is more like a digital version of a conversation. They are very very different ways of communicating and if Salen and Ivan had been communicating via messenger they would not have had the same relationship at all. So yeah I really really enjoyed it. I felt in a way that it was engaging the part of my brain that gets engaged when I read classics. It's kind of that acceptance that I'm not going to understand everything that's being said but I'll just go along with it anyway because it's enjoyable. I definitely felt that with The Idiot. I never studied anything particularly academic at university so I definitely don't always understand academic speech and I think a few of the concepts that Salem talks about went over my head but I kind of enjoyed just being in that world anyway, partly perhaps because I didn't get that same university experience, so I really do enjoy reading about it. And so yeah, with my experiment of trying to read two books at once, it worked with The Idiot because of the type of book it is. I don't think it will work with most of the books that I read. I think I still prefer just reading one at a time because I really like getting into a story and putting my full attention on it until I finished it and then I'm able to switch over to another one. So that is all of the books I read in June. It was an interesting month in that two of them I enjoyed a lot and will probably be contenders for my favourite books of the year and the other two I really did not enjoy and the fact that I own them means they sit on my bookshelf annoying me and reminding me that I didn't like them. It's very frustrating. As always, let me know if you have any opinions and thoughts on these four books and I will see you in my next video. Bye!